Welcome back to VA Creative and part 38 of the Ultima RS build. And on this episode, we're going to be fitting the wheel arch gills and also doing an autopsy on the engine. Welcome back to the Dean Den, and what an episode. Oh, I just love building this car. Now, what we're gonna be focusing on first is actually fitting the gills, what I call them, on top of the front and rear wheel arches. These are panels that Ultima have added to the RS to give it that LMP look. And in addition, thank you to all of you out there that have been giving me ideas of what to do with my 6.2 liter LS3. And today I'm going to run through some of those ideas and really have a look at that engine. I might take a few bits off to see how easy it is to disassemble things like the valve covers and the intake plenum cover and the fuel rails and yeah, just take a few things off. And I guess all there is left to do is, what should I say? Let's just get spannering. Well, Rufus and I have got some news. He looks very excited, doesn't he? Yesterday, I got a phone call. Yep, I got a phone call from Wendy. And Wendy invited me to a Cars and Coffee Ultima event on Sunday, the 14th of May. And I'll pop the details up there. It's close to Silverstone. The weather looks amazing, especially in the morning. So I'm coming along between 10 and 12. I may bring the creative director as well. So I'll have my camera gear so I can film those Ultimas, talk to a few people, and you can also get featured in the next episode, part 39. Anyway, on that note, I better get back to spannering. Anyway, until later, and I'll see you Sunday if you decide to pop along. So the first job of today is fitting the gills. Now, the Ultima RS, unlike the GTR and the Evo, have had these additional panels put in on the top of the rear and front wheel arches. Now, what are they for? Well, the idea is, I believe, I'm not an aerodynamic expert, what it's to do is to remove low pressure from inside the wheel arches. So basically, at very high velocities, the car is pressed down to the ground, more on the front than the rear. But to be honest, if you do a bit of research, they just look cool, don't they? Now, Ultima offer two choices. You can have what I have here, which is a GRP panel, gel coated to match the body. And I quite like that. Or you can splash the cash and opt for carbon fiber. But I just think, it's just a personal view, that I prefer these panels to be the same color as the bodywork. And I asked Richard at the factory and he said, it's about a 50-50 split between builders. So there's quite a few operations on fitting these you know, quite simple panels. First thing you have to do is on the rear, you spray them in satin black. Of course you do to match the inside of the clamshells. Second, you then prepare the edge of these panels by spraying them with undercoat and top coat and a lacquer to match the color of the gel coat on the car. Now, okay, it's a bit extreme. You can hardly see the edge, but it's just one of those things I'd like to do. And one of those things the factory say, if you want to, you can actually add that little finishing touch. And then finally, there are grills to match the other grills around the car to go in these four slots. And of course, we use Worth adhesive to seal them in. So what I'm gonna do is put a bit of background music on and I'm gonna show you the stages one at a time. And then at the end, we're gonna bond them in place, put some tape on like I have here, and she's gonna just look magnificent when they're bonded in place. Anyway, let's get spannering. Now what I've done here is I've masked it already. I'm not gonna show you that. And then what we're gonna do is take it outside and just give it a quick spray. So 
So here we are, sprayed in satin black paint. It looks quite neat actually. Now the next stage is what I'm gonna be doing is cutting the masking tape off from around the edge here. And then what I'm gonna do is be masking off the back because I don't want to overspray on this. And then I'll be doing the three coats of paint. The undercoat, the top coat, and then a lacquer on top. And what I've done is I've just gone to a car store and got a tin of paint mixed up so it actually matches the gel coat color, which is pretty straightforward actually. So here we go, I'm gonna show you masking this up now. Now you can see here I've put in like a little edge here, a little border. I'm not too worried about the accuracy of that because that's the area that's gonna be bonded to the rear clamshell and you won't see it anyway. What I've done is I've gone around the edge with a bit of wet and dry, looking for any maybe small imperfections or small air holes that have come from the laminating process. And if you do find those, just use a bit of P38 to fill it and then sand it down. Now this edge, remember, we're not really gonna see it. It's only if you peer down that little shut line, but let's get it perfect. Now, this panel had no air holes, so that was great. So what I'll do is I'll do the first coat, which is an undercoat. I won't show you me spraying it, it's pointless. And then I'll do the top coat, which is actually the white matched to the gel coat. And then finally, we'll put a lacquer on. And then once I've done that, I can remove all this masking and then we're ready to start bonding in the mesh. So let's get to it. And there we go, all four gills painted. And that was quite a lot of work, I must say, that probably took me a whole morning to do all that. But next, we're going to be trimming and putting on the grills. And then the finale will be actually fitting them to the car and they're gonna look so cool. Making me crazy, so I'm just gonna drive, drive, drive. Yes, it's early morning in the Dean Den and the worth has set. Well, I hope it has anyway. And now the next stage is to remove what I call the chopsticks. I mean, these are really good. You should buy a box of these if you're building one of these cars. But anyway, anyway, I'm gonna cut off the ties and then remove the tape and we're just gonna have a look to see how everything has bonded. And then all there's left to do to put these on permanently is give a key to the recess on this front clamshell. And then again, use some worth, put a bead around and then seal it once and for all. So let's just get the snippers out.
And there we are. Wow, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? And if we look on the back, we can see here, I don't know if you can see that, it's the neat line of worth, which is thanks to using tape. Anyway, looking good. And here I am, again, a full day pass. Two in one weekend, amazing. I know, I know, thanks, missus. Anyway, what we're gonna be doing today is we're going to be focusing inside the front clamshell. Now, there's lots of small jobs I need to complete to get everything sorted under there. And I must say, this is all about drilling holes and putting fasteners in and, and a very satisfying day. There'll be no gluing, there'll be no painting. So this is nice and clean, just the way I actually prefer it. So the components I'm going to be fitting are here. This is a mesh that matches all the other meshes on the car, but this one isn't powder coated. And what this does is goes in front of the radiator. And it's basically to stop stones and debris hitting the matrix. So that's the first thing I'll be fitting. Next, we have the brake hydraulic fluid bottle and bracket and all the piping associated with that. Next, we have the washer bottle. I know it's getting exciting, isn't it? Anyway, next we have the washer bottle um, with the tube that actually feeds through the center tub and obviously goes to the spray on top. Then we have the front wiring loom which is a very small loom with beautiful twist connectors, and I'll show you these later, that go into the front lights, and then a multi-way connector that plugs into the main loom. Then we have the horn. Oh, wow. Anyway, the horn. And then these are little fasteners for the pull cables for the front latches. And to finish all this off, I have the headlight main beam relay to fit, and that's it. So a lot of little jobs, but when they're all done, pretty much the front of the car is going to be complete. So first job, I realized I should have put this on before putting the clamshell on. However, I can do it. Now what I've done is I've covered the edges with some tape because this is so scratchy. Um, so I'm gonna thread this in here. And what it does is it goes in all the way back. And what I've had to do is relieve the mesh around the bobbin fixings for the rad, and then it can go all the way back. So I'm gonna mark those now, and then cut them out with some wire snips, okay. Different ways to be heard. 
there's no room um, between <laughs> the front of the car and the wall to get the camera. So I'm going to explain what I'm going to do here and then you'll see why it's easier to do it without the front canopy on. I'm going to drill two holes to accept some M5 set screws which will hold the top of the mesh in place. So you're going to see me masking up, marking, drilling, tapping and then putting into place. Okay. So now we have drilled and tapped the two fixing holes. I've taken the tape off this and I'm easing it in very gently so I don't scratch anything and we're going to put it on permanently. There it goes, sitting home. Right, I'll get underneath now. No need to over tighten them because you don't want to pull the threads because it's only going through about three millimeter steel. There we go. And here it is in place. Looking good. I must say, I do like the fact that Ultima have decided to use this same type of mesh as they've done on all the other grills on the carbs. I must say it does look very nice. It's not very understated. Um, you can see here just that head there. That's one of the set screws and one over there. You can hardly see it and look at this tow bar. Isn't that beautiful? I must say that is a work of art. So there we go. That's all finished. So let's move on to, I don't know what next. I don't know. Let's just go in the clamshell and start knocking those jobs on the head. Welcome to the inside of my RS front clamshell. And the first job we're going to tackle is putting on the windscreen washer bottle. Now, what Ultima have done to make this super easy, because where you position this on this bulkhead here, you have to be very careful because of course, when the clamshell comes down, it's all about clearance. Now that may sound a very simple thing, but get that wrong, drill a hole in the wrong place, and it's really, really annoying. But what Ultima do is they provide a bracket, which is here. Now this bracket goes on the back of, if you can imagine here, it slots onto there. And the position of this, the bottom hole goes on this set screw here that holds this T-junction on. And that is pre-drilled in the aluminium panel. So you know that's going to be in exactly the right place. Now clearly there's a space behind here and Ultima kindly provide this turned spacer. And that sits behind that panel and they provide, whoops, this M, I think it's an M6 set screw that goes through here and also a rivnut that goes into here. So what I'm going to be doing is taping this up, drilling the hole, putting the rivnut in and then basically bolting the bracket into place. Then what we have to do is put in the feed for the water which goes through this bulkhead and then goes into this hole here. I'm not sure if that's in shot, which is the windscreen washer jet and then there is an electrical cable somewhere around here i'll find it in a minute it will it will crop up that actually goes on to the motor here um, and that's it so let's get going
Next, we're moving on to the hydraulic fluid reservoir. So let's just open this bag up. And we obviously have the reservoir itself, and then with a height sensor there, which plugs into the loom, which tells us if that level's getting a bit low. We also have the bracket made of aluminium, which will hold this reservoir against the bulkhead. We then have stainless steel fasteners to hold the bracket onto the bulkhead. Here we have little worm drives, little clips to go on the tubes, and also some really nice billet alloy ends to go on the end of the master cylinders with a copper washer. So we have one, two of those. So let's move over to the car and fit this. We've got the missus in the cockpit, upside down. She's, she's holding a spanner. You all right in there? Yeah, she's okay. You can get out now. Right, so this fits just there like that. Beautiful. Right, apologies for the, the view. It's not very good, I know, but it's the best I could get you. So we have two master cylinders down here, and what we have to do is remove the plastic bung from each, and then, as I showed you earlier, we have these beautiful billet alloy barbed ends, oh, with a washer that I've just dropped, barbed ends which screw into these. And the copper washer that I just dropped makes sure that's a fluid tight seal. And then what we can do is cut the lengths of tube to the reservoir and then tighten up the Jubilee clips or the worm drives, whatever you want to call them. And that's it, easy stuff. Right, let's hoover all this up because this needs to be a clean job. And while I'm under here, I'm going to cable tie this, or zip tie, sorry, the clutch line. This is 5 8. Why it's not metric, I don't know. So we just want to pinch up that copper washer. There you go. Okay. So. trial fit here. So this will go here just to make sure yeah, that, that will work. So make sure those two are on.
진짜 대박. Rattling through these jobs. Front grill, done. Washer bottle, done. Brake reservoir, done. And next, horn. It's quite a small horn. Looks like a snail. But anyway, what Ultima do is they provide a lovely bracket. It's a little step bracket there with, again, stainless steel fastener and also a riv nut. Now, this is located down there. Um, now, I've got to somehow drill a hole and also put that rib nut in, which may dictate exactly the height I put it in there. So I'm going to move you around to the other side so you can see what I'm doing. And let's just fit that horn. Now... I want to put that as far down as I possibly can get to. Right, let's drill. Okay, there's the wires for it. Okay, let's, let's close the lid and see if it fits. Yep, that clears. You can't really see, can you? So, what I'm talking about, uh, you can't really see. I'll put an arrow in. Next, we're going to put the front lighting loom into the clamshell. Now, if I open this up, What we have here is a nice little loom, not very long. Now, these three connectors plug into the main Ultima loom and these you can see front right light, front left light. These are multi-way connectors that have threaded covers and also rubber 
flanges in so they are totally waterproof. So let's go and fit these to the front clamshell. Next on the list is putting the fuse panel back in position, which is just a couple of you know, set screws really, and also popping on that relay for the headlamps, and then also putting in the pull cables for these latches. And to be honest with you, I'm a bit tired now. And one thing my dad said to me is, if you start feeling tired, stop working. So. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep those other jobs just to another episode. So what we're going to do now is talk about engines. Wow, what an episode so far. Loads of spattering. Anyway, engine autopsy, my LS3. Now, I must say, I filmed the intro about four or five days ago, and I said I was going to take some parts off the engine, but... I decided against that and why well two very good reasons firstly everything is sealed at the moment and if I start taking off valve covers and plenum covers it's not a good idea until I actually get the components to put back on because one I don't want debris in there and two I'll forget how stuff went together well I doubt if I will but it's best just to leave it so let's focus on what you viewers actually shared with me since the last episode, how to dress the beast. And it's very interesting because I had a complete array of answers from a leave it as it is to basically painting it orange and having a huge scoop on top. But I have probably gone a little bit in the middle, not too conservative, but enough to make this thing pop. So first of all, Painting the block. Now, some of you said paint the block in a very bright color. Now, interestingly, I've been having a look at my gearbox and also this engine with a few beers. And it's very clear to me that the rough castings or the, the sort of majority of the component, if left untreated, will fur up over time. That's aluminum oxide, which is the white powder. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to use silver engine enamel on the block, not the machine surfaces, and I'm not gonna be spraying over all the bolt heads, so I'm gonna be masking those off, but basically the rough surfaces on the engine, I'm gonna be spraying in silver, and also the transmission, so it all matches. Next, valve covers. Now, it was pretty unanimous out there that the valve covers on this car are a bit fussy and they're a bit dull. So what I'm going to go for is I'm going to get replacement valve covers, not covering the ignition coils. I'll tell you why in a moment. What I'm going to do is get them powder coated in red to match the AP Racing calipers. And with those on, what I want to do is I want to show as much of that red off as possible. So these basically coil packs, what I'm going to do is reposition them further up on the engine. And you can do that by using brackets that relocate them. Just nudge them up a bit. Now, of course, that means I'm gonna need longer plug leads. And yes, I'm gonna go for plug leads that basically have a red outer to actually complement those brake calipers and those valve covers. Next, fuel rail. Yeah, I can't live with this. 
I'm sorry, I just can't. So what I'm going for is I'm going to go for billet alloy fuel rails. They're not too expensive. And there was a big sort of two sides to this. One go red, one go black. But what I'm gonna do is go black because the chances of me matching anodized aluminium to a powder coated valve cover is pretty remote and they might clash. So I'm gonna go for black. And also what that means is using those billet alloy fuel rails is I can use braided hosing and AN fittings to match the rest of the fuel installation in the Ultima. And then finally, the skull cap. Yes, I didn't know that was called a skull cap. This piece of plastic on top. Now this is just a cover. Now I didn't realize that. I actually thought that was the plenum, but actually it is a cover and under it is a squishy bit and that's to dampen the noise going on under there. But this item here, I want to replace it. Now, I could paint it. I could hydro dip it in carbon effect, but I don't wanna do that because there's so much carbon on this machine. I don't want to compromise at this point. So there are a couple of companies out there that produce this in pure carbon and finished in high gloss lacquer. Now that's a big expensive item but that's what I'd ideally like to do. Well, keep watching and I can see if I can save the pennies to do that. And what I would say is, I don't know what I'm gonna do in the next episode. I have a list this long of lots of really nice, rewarding jobs. I've got more carbon to fit. Yeah, I might do some carbon actually. Um, I've also got the interior to complete, that is fitting the gauges, that's putting the seats in. I might do that. I'll see. That's what's so nice about building these cars because now at this stage, I can really pick and choose what I'd like to do. So on that note, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say bye for this week. Thank you for all tuning in. And remember, always smile and enjoy your spannery. I'm driving, you're smiling, just really